Hello guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's Valentine's Day makeup look. I cannot believe we are already in February. That is kind of crazy. I feel like I just uploaded my New Year's tutorial and here we are now doing a Valentine's Day look. This is the makeup look for today. I am so happy with it. I love how it came out. Not natural, but it's like bronzy, wearable, but bold lips as well. I wanted to give you guys an easy look to recreate, something that anybody can wear. I'm not wearing any false lashes either, so just like a mascara look with a bold lip. And I actually I'm showing you guys in this video two options for the lip color so you can either wear this pretty pink one or you can wear this red one right here I want to show you guys just how versatile this whole makeup look is because let's say you don't even want to go with the red or the pink you can honestly go with a gloss you can go with nude you can go with berry you can go with whatever lip color you want but I wanted to give you guys just like an easy look I'm really just kind of bring out your features you know sculpting out your cheekbones and the brows and rocking your own lashes and I really love how this came out that is it guys for today's intro as always before we get started like subscribe comment comment, share, do what you gotta do, spread the love, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's makeup video. I'm gonna go in first and apply some primer, and I'm gonna be using this one from Huda Beauty. This is the Complexion Perfection Pre-Base Primer. It is set to be super moisturizing and perfect for just that prime on the skin. So we're just gonna do one pump. I only like to prime with these kind of primers in the areas I feel like I need a little bit more, I guess kind of like in a way mattifying and in a way that's going to even this area out. It depends on the look that I'm going for. Some primers, I will add it all over my skin, but this one is a little bit more on the thicker consistency, meaning it's gonna be more like filling and smoothing. So I kind of only want it where I need it. And for me, it's the T-zone area. Using my fingers to pounce the product in my skin so that it doesn't roll off. Sometimes that happens when certain products don't mix together. So if you're using like a gel base and then something's water based, everything will kind of roll. I don't know if you guys saw that I had a little bit of that going on, but it can happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and pat it in so we can ensure it stays there and it doesn't happen. So now that the product is on my skin, I'm gonna go in and add an additional glow to get my skin looking super luminous and super dewy. This is a product that I've been using since it's been in my hands. It is amazing. And it is this new product from Auric. I'm sure you guys have been seeing this online. This is Samantha's new brand. and. She she killed it with this whole lineup right here. So this is the Glowless Radiant Luminizer and it is a product that you can wear alone with concealer or with your foundation. I've been wearing it alone with concealer lately and I'm obsessed with how it looks. Today I'm gonna actually be pairing it with my foundation to kind of create a little cocktail of glow on my skin. But oh my God, this product right here is a game changer. If you love dewy, dumpling, steamy, moisty skin, I don't know if that even sounds good, but that glow, the glass skin, this is gonna be the product for you. I believe there are eight to nine different shades she came out with and they all have like a beautiful undertone in them that you can get it to be a little bit more bronzy, a little bit more cool tone, a little bit more of a yellow tone, like they're beautiful. So it has been my recent obsession and it reminds me a little bit of the Marc Jacobs Do You Do Coconut Drops, I believe that's the name of it. I was actually a fan of that for a really long time. Let me tell you guys why I like this so much better. This actually is not just a luminizer, it actually has skincare ingredients in here as well. The consistency is a little thicker it's more long-lasting and it wears so good through the day as well also supporting a small business can't go wrong I am absolutely obsessed with these drops I have been loving them since they've been in my hands like look at the glow that it's giving my skin. Just wait, wait till it's all blended. I've been wearing it lately with just concealer and oh my God, it is beautiful. This is gonna be probably in a lot of makeup routines coming up because of the finish it gives my skin. I like to look very dewy. I love it. I think it's something that looks just so forgiving on the skin and with the right products and in the right places for your skin type, I think it can look so beautiful. I'm also gonna add a couple of these drops onto my neck area. I already have a glow going on my shoulder, but I kind of want this area to look a little dewy as well. So. I'm gonna go ahead and work it down. For my foundation, I'm gonna be going in with these two products from NARS. We got the Soft Matte Foundation in Stromboli and the Sheer Glow. I'm gonna make a little cocktail out of both of these and put it on my skin. I love Soft Matte, but I find this to be just a little bit too matte for my skin because I am on the dry side. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple drops of Sheer Glow into this so it's a little bit more luminous on my skin. Love it. I've come to realize that I really think that NARS foundations are the best for my skin. You guys know I love natural radiance. Obviously love soft matte. Sheer glow is something that I do wear occasionally. This is very vacation vibes over here. I feel like I always gravitate towards NARS complexion products. They just work so great for my skin and I find them to have the best undertones. I just never have to touch up, which is the best thing. Next for concealer, we're gonna be using this one from Dosa Colors in the shade number 13. It has been a while since I played with this one, but I kind of wanted to get back into it. So today 
today is the day. I'm gonna go ahead and add some in the areas that I first and foremost wanna brighten up, which is going to be right here, kind of like the center of my face. I'm also gonna target underneath of my nose area, another area that I really wanna brighten up. And this is also helps out with discoloration as well. And a little bit on the chin area. For my under eyes, I personally just like it to kind of like lift up my eye and to brighten it up. That's like one of the reasons why I love concealers so much. I'm also gonna go ahead and add some to the bridge of my nose. Just like that. Then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit on my skin for about two to three minutes. Let it kind of dry down and then blend it out. I believe I saw Makeup by Ariel talk about this one time and I've been obsessed with doing that ever since then. So the trick is to apply your concealer, let it sit before you blend out. And for me, it just creates like a more long lasting concealer. It blends out so much better. And I feel like when you blend it out, you're just kind of blending it in place and kind of moving it around versus like trying to blend it when it's still really wet and then it kind of lifts and then it starts to move around get crazy so i'm gonna give it like a few minutes and then we'll be back to blend it out and now we blend right, i'm now gonna go ahead and take my elf camo sponge and pounce it over the concealer and you can see i'm just kind of pouncing it into place and it just blends it out so nicely i'm gonna go ahead and do it on this side again so you can see i'm not really even going like up and around it's just moving the concealer that's already on my skin in place and then what I like to do too is flip it on the side that's clean to clean up the sides of my eye, like right here. That way we don't add any more concealer, but we're just lightly blending this area out. Okay, so now that my complexion is done, we're gonna go ahead and get into some bronzing. So I'm gonna go in with my Holy Girl bronzer from MAC. This is Give Me Sun. I'm gonna go ahead and tap this in, bronze up pretty much my whole skin. We're gonna do the perimeter of my forehead into my jawline and then down below. You're gonna see almost immediately how much this product warms up my face. The formula of the mineralized skin finishes are just so nice on the skin. They don't skip. They look really just natural and effortless. I feel like it works the best for most skin complexions and it just looks so nice. Like every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, I love a bronze finish. Then for this, I'm gonna go in with this flat brush. It's not like a regular kind of uh, powder brush where it's like just round. It's kind of flat, but like nice and big. So I'm just gonna hit this on my apples and then work it into kind of like the temples, hairline, so that it all flows together. And then as well as hitting the jawline. Now that my skin is set, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the Glow Recipe Watermelon Mist onto my skin. I love doing this before I go into setting with any kind of powders. I think I've talked about this more on my Instagram Live before than I do like on here, but I like to set in between. This is what's going to help make the skin not look so textury, not look so dry, and look just nice and luminous. So I do this before I go into setting, and it's really gonna help everything to slay like on a more, I guess, kind of like not so dry surface. And I feel like for that reason, my skin never looks dry at the end the makeup look it's always going to look nice and luminous and that's kind of like the results that i want but still being like full glam if you guys know what i mean next i'm going to go in with the maybelline fit me powder in the shade 120 and set my t-zone and under eyes i love doing this before i move into any kind of setting powder like the actual loose one and this to me is such an underrated powder it's so so good i just sometimes like go through my moments where i use something for a long time and kind of forget about other things oh my gosh okay you can tell i've had this for a while it's already broken oops but this is just an overall really good powder has amazing coverage and the whole fit me line is just amazing in general so they have the one that goes the matte and poreless and then i believe there's one the something in dewy i forgot what the name is but matte and poreless is my favorite i find this to really give me that like flawless finish on my skin that's why i decided to use it today now before i move into actually setting my skin i'm gonna actually put some blush on and we're gonna be using my favorite from mac melba again another like cult favorite one of mine that I just love so much. So I'm gonna use the same brush, which is the It Cosmetics Ingold one. This blush is gonna be going just on like my apples on my cheeks, but like slowly working into the bronzer as well. I am gonna load up on blush. I think that's been kind of a thing I've been doing a lot lately. I find this to really just bring out my face and my complexion and give the look so much life. Comment down below if you've been with me here when I used to not like blush. I went through the longest time not using blush. It was so weird, but now I can't live without it. And now I put more on the I probably should be wearing. I am so sorry. I forgot to press play when I was baking and I realized right at the end that I was never recording. But for my baking today, as you guys know, I used the Maybelline Loose Powder. This is in the shade number 10. I have number 20 as well, but number 20 is gonna be a little too dark for underneath of my eyes. This is better for like an all over kind of powder. While I feel like the 10 is perfect for brightening, it really resembles the Laura Mercier powder. The only thing is that the Laura Mercier translucent powder is a translucent powder, so it's a little bit more sheer. While this one is a loose powder, so think of the pressed one being crushed 
washed and finely milled and it's in a loose formula. So it's gonna be heavier in coverage, so a little goes a long way. And it's overall just such a good powder. So, so good. I'm so glad that I found it again and I'm gonna be using it going forward. Today we're gonna be using a new palette and this one is the Transition Palette from Dominique Cosmetics. Let me tell you guys right now, I love, 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 love this palette. If you are somebody who is new to incorporating eyeshadows into your routine, you kind of want the basics. You kind of want just something simple. This is definitely the palette to look into. So this, Oh my God, it is like transitions heaven. You guys know I spend a lot of time in my transition and I'm always looking for those good transition undertones, especially when it comes to having the essential colors. This is it right here, the formula. It's fire, it's so good. I feel like transitions are such a hit or miss. Like some palettes got them, some of them don't. This one definitely has it for me. For my eyeshadow base as well, I'm gonna be using this one from Urban Decay. Who remembers this one? I used to use this for so many years. This is their primer potion in the shade Eden. And as you can see, it just has a little bit more of like this concealer like color. The only thing with this one is that it does dry down pretty fast. When you apply this on the eye, it's not like the P. Louise one where you can like come back to it like way later and it's gonna be fine. This is a little bit more drying, so you have to work kind of quick with this one. But nonetheless, it's a good staple eyeshadow base to have. And I just added a little bit onto the lid and lightly took it up into the bra bone area. I'm gonna start first by applying on the shade Caramel and putting this right into the center of my eye. For this kind of look, I really want it to look romantic and effortless and not so carved out. We're taking a pretty nice size blending brush. This is uh, my Smith 232. We're gonna go ahead and take this right into the center of my eye, right there, and then start working side to side. Kind of like a dome shape motion and making sure I don't get any of the color on the lid. We're gonna have the lid pretty open throughout the whole look. And then we're also now gonna go ahead and let that color travel up into the brow bone area. I'm now gonna go in with the shade Hazelnut and I'm gonna go over pretty much what I just did, starting this right underneath of my brow bone. I don't even, this is not my brow bone. Right underneath of this wasip right here, I don't even know what that's called. Just right underneath of your crease, okay? Right before that bone starts. We're gonna go ahead and add it over and do the same thing, just kind of defining it out first and then go left and right. Just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and keep on sculpting the eye out. Again, just leaving the lid completely bare and I'm also not rounding it. Sometimes I do round it on the end, but for this look, I want the whole lid to be pretty open. So I'm just gonna focus on making sure that those two colors are nicely blended together. And then from there, I'm gonna lightly start to work it up and just a little bit over the brow bone area. And then here's kind of the difference in between both sides. You can see this one just looks a little bit more defined than this side. And then this side, my crazy eye. This one is like always just a struggle, but I have to go a little higher on the inner part to make it kind of even on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep on wiggling it and then following the first color out the door. So far, we are at hour and six minutes. For the lid color, we're gonna go in with the shade Natural. This is like a pinky undertone kind of lid color. I really like it. So we're gonna hit that right over where I left open. In. Not adding a base either because this is like a little bit more of a softer look. No need to cut the crease. However, you can if you want, but I don't think it's needed. Oh, that did it for me right there. This is it for me. And then from there, I like to lightly tap the color into the transition so that it kind of travels up together and everything flows nicely. And then same thing, just going on this side, right in the center and then going left and right. And now what I'm gonna do is go in with the palette again. I'm gonna pick up the shade Mocha and Coffee Beans. It's like a really nice kind of chocolatey brown. And I'm just going to add this at the very end of my eye. This is something I like to do anytime I'm doing these kind of looks where it's just like mascara focus or it's softer. I still need a little bit of smokiness in like the end of my eye. So I'm just gonna add a little bit right there. Same thing on this side, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab coffee beans on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the very corner And we just totally faked a lash right there for my brows We're gonna go in with the Kat Von D brow pomade in the shade light brown It's been a hot minute since I've used something different like this I've been using pins a lot lately But today I kind of just wanted to circle back to like an old-school product that I really used to love and I still really like till this day So we're gonna be adding this on with an angled brush and I'm just gonna go ahead and create these light strokes throughout my brows I really have been loving the softer brow nowadays Which is why I've been doing my brows last lately and I really like it like here and there I will do my brows in the beginning, but I still am a 
lot softer than I was before. I just feel like less is more, especially in the brow area. That's the look that we're going for. The first thing you want to do is brush up those brows. This is for like any of your brow application routines. Just brush them up, get them nice and in place. And for there, we're gonna go ahead and target like mainly the, t the end of the brow where I feel like I have no hair. If you have a lot of hair here, just do like a light fill in. But for me, it's like the one area that it's been a real struggle with for years. I love trying different stuff. I also like kind of circling back to things I used to use, but uh, this one right here is just so good. It's such a great pomade and it's long lasting as well, which is a plus. Brows are done. I went ahead and did my brow cleanup off camera. This is something that I actually do not like doing on camera. It takes so long and I've done it in a lot of videos. So if you guys ever want to know how I did it, you can go watch that. So now that that's done, we are getting down to the final products in today's video. And the next one is going to be mascara. As you guys know, we are not doing falsies in today's video. Personally, I love them, but I can appreciate a beautiful makeup look without false lashes. I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, which by the way, if you guys do not know, I had the amazing opportunity to work with them on designing my very own packaging, which is now available. <laughs> That's me, right there. So cute, beautiful marble finish on this with a little bit of brass, totally inspired by like all the home interior and home decor that I love. And I'm just so happy with the finish of it. So it's pretty cool to say I have my own design with Too Faced. I have a full one in here, which I'm keeping for myself because I'm gonna share this with my future kids and be like, yo mama did this right here. So excited about that. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and apply the Better Than Sex Mascara. I'm also gonna give you guys like a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see how my eyes look, obviously with the mascara and without it. So that is one coat right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do another coat and I let that dry like a few seconds in between before moving on to that. Something that I learned a long time ago in my makeup artistry days when you really want to get in on there but you don't want to get it all over your lid is to get a brush like this, fold it against the eye and from there now you can just get really in on the corner and voila because this is picking up what would have gotten all over your eyelid. Uh, okay, this is something also I always do after I apply mascara and it's nice and dry. I like to push this against my eye as much as possible and that gives it like a nice lift, but I do it when it's not fully dry, but still like a little, little bit wet and this really helps to push them up. We're gonna go ahead and do a little bit more of the shadow underneath. So I'm gonna pick up Caramel and blend Hazelnut together, make a little baby. What I'm gonna do is actually hit this right in the center of my eye and go left and right. And all I'm doing is kind of creating like a wash of color so that it's not completely bare under there. Also, I don't want it so, so smoky. So just a little bit in the middle and then work left and right. Soften it up. And I also love that it's like not so perfect either. Like it's just, just creating this beautiful color underneath. I'm gonna go in now and do a couple coats of mascara underneath on my eyes. And I'm gonna go vertical with the brush and go against the lashes and brush them down. This is gonna help to really kind of fan them out. See how it just like nicely separates them. I want it to be really soft too, cause I obviously didn't do a whole lot of makeup underneath. When I go for a little bit more of my smokier underneath eyes, I go in vertical and work like this because I want a lot of the product to sit as close as I can to the lash line. But for a look like this, we want it soft and fluffy. We're gonna go ahead and just use the brush vertically to apply it on. If you guys were at the airport and they were like, you cannot bring any makeup except one product, that's it. What are you bringing? I wanna know down below. They always say an island, but it's like, if I'm on an island, I'm not gonna wear any makeup, okay? SPF. I would love to say mascara, but I think for me, it would be actually be concealer. <laughs> Cause I can do a whole lot with it. Woo! My eyes are done. They look really, really good. The last thing we're gonna do for this look is get into the lip products. And when it comes to Valentine's Day, I think of four lip colors. Number one, red, always. Number two, nude. Number three, some type of blush tone, gloss. And then I think of hot pink. I feel like for me, if I'm going on a date with a look like this, I can honestly do any of those lip colors. I'm actually gonna show you guys two different lip colors you can wear this with. The first one being red. So I'm gonna show you guys a really good red lip pencil and a really good red lip color. And then I'm also gonna do hot pink as well, which is actually a color I never wear and I have this one as well. I don't know. I'm in between them. I might mix them, I really don't know. So I'm gonna show you guys first and foremost the red shade. I'm gonna go in with MAC Cherry to define my lip. This is like my go-to red lip liner. It's been my go-to for so many years. And then for a little added drama, I love going in with MAC Night Moth and hitting this just at the corners of my lip. Night Moth is like an absolute must lip pencil that everyone needs. 
And then for the lip color, I have two of them that I really love. The first one is Lady Balls from Too Faced. And then I have the Holy Grail from Persona. My all-time favorite red lipstick, though, is Arriba from ColourPop. You guys know that is my lip color that I made with them. But it is no longer available, unfortunately. So I don't want to show you guys because you guys are going to go to the site and see that it's sold out. And they don't carry it anymore. So these are like the closest lip colors to them that I think if you loved Arriba and you loved like the, the blue red undertone and you saw beautifully it is, I think you will love these as well. So today I'm going to be using the Persona lip color in Holy Grail. So this is the finish of the red lipstick. Very nice and matte. I also went ahead and added a little bit more Night Moth just to kind of define it out. Oops, wrong one. Night Moth to define it out. But the red is a classic. You can never go wrong with a red, especially for Valentine's Day. And if you're somebody who maybe feels like you can't wear red, I really think it's finding the right formula for you and finding the right undertone. Personally, bold colors such as reds, any kind of berry tones, pinks, oranges, I prefer them to be matte formulas so they don't move, they stay in place. And and they just really last all night nothing definitely recommend looking into a different formula if you guys are struggling with reds also the undertones play a big factor if you're somebody who feels like a lot of reds look super orangey on you or they make your teeth like yellow in my opinion I think that the blue red undertones are the best ones so something like this you see how it's like has a lot of blue in these these are gonna be the best and also pairing it with a good lip liner that's like the best advice I can give you guys when it comes to reds so that's on the red let's go ahead and swap this lip color out and go for the pink so for the pink lip color I'm gonna be kind of experimenting because I don't wear pinks that much i used to be like a hot pink lover who remembers candy yum yum that was my jam back in the day so i'm gonna be using mac b if you guys don't know by now mac are my favorite lip liners i think they're the best out there uh, if you guys think there's a better brand let me know but i always go back some so mac b is going to be the one for today and then i'm going to be using this up color from fenty beauty in the shade unlocked it's like a beautiful kind of like summery-ish pink and then i'm also going to add a little bit of this one from kylie this one is called say no more it's actually really really old like you can see right there but I'm gonna just make it work and I'm gonna pop this one mainly just like in the center to brighten it up I love creating like an ombre effect especially with the pinks I think that makes it look so much better than just like a pink now if you're somebody who's like okay I don't want to go hot hot pink then I recommend going with like these kind of pinks these are really pretty I would do this but I feel like this is just like an everyday kind of look for me so I'm gonna go ahead and skip on this color but these are really good pink ones and you can add gloss on top and it looks pretty but let's do hot pink today let's have fun so starting off first with a beat and I'm just gonna go ahead and line my lips so now I'm gonna go in with the shade Unlock and kind of just do the same thing I did with the last one, go right in the middle of the lip and work it left and right. Oh wow, this is so pretty. Honestly, like even on its own, I might just leave it. You know, I'm actually kind of glad I went with the pink glass because I was scared. I haven't used pinks in a while and I was a little worried I wasn't gonna like it, but hello pinks, this is like my new thing right now. I definitely think the red is like very sophisticated and sexy, but the pink is like so like a vibe on its own. I actually am going to pop a little bit of the Kylie one just right in the center just to kind of brighten it up. And that beet lip pencil sh goes with every pink. It's so nice. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes. Obsessed is an understatement. I am so happy that I went with the pink at the end. This combination right here is giving me like my old Mac Day vibes. I went ahead and added a little bit of blush off camera from Dior. This actually matches my backdrop, which is really nice. This color is called 00 Pink. I got this set in PR and it's kind of like a light, like Malibu Barbie kind of pink. I just kind of hit this on the apples to brighten it up because I felt like I needed something else. Um, although Melba is like my favorite blush ever, I haven't worn a lip like this and I didn't realize that this is obviously a lot more warm tone than the color so I need to swing a little brighter oh my god I love the way this came out I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of setting spray I ended up finding uh, an additional Morphe one thank god so I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on oh, I think I broke it <laughs> okay guys so that is it for today's makeup tutorial Hope you guys enjoyed it. I really love how it came out. I'm like so happy with it. And I love this lip color. I cannot stop staring at it. I think it's so pretty. But I want to know in the comments down below if you guys prefer the red lip or the pink lip. And if you guys would ever rock any of the lip colors that we did. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys know I appreciate you being here till the very end. And with that being said, I will see you in my next video. Bye.